already getting pretty warm. My gosh. You know, you'd think that you'd get used to these 100 degree weathers, but unfortunately, I haven't gotten used to it. One of the things I like about being in hot weather is that you know that it's bright. You know that it's right. You know that it's something that God intended for you, because after all, He created it. It isn't as though it was increased beyond bearing, and it isn't as though we can't adapt to it, but rather we have to change our focus and the way that we do things in order to be in that light, to be in that heat, as it were, to make adjustments, like, you know, change your clothes. I know when I was in Alaska, before I walked outside in the winter, <laughs> I put on some clothes. <laughs> but out here, if I'm going to walk outside today, I'm taking off some clothes, because, you know, when you've got hair growing everywhere, eat your heart out, Gregory, then guess what? <laughs> you need to kind of like, you know, wear lighter clothes, because Quite frankly, clothes rubbing against you know all this hair and fur that you got makes it hot. God is good in that with which He allows us to adapt to those places that He chooses to place us. We become moved by His Spirit and then conformed into His image that He wants for us to be at that particular place in time, knowing always that the eventual end will be to be like Jesus. Jesus, when He went out into the desert, it was interesting was that he didn't change his clothes, but he was filled with the Spirit, and then he was driven into the desert by the devil to be tempted. Interesting. Or he was driven in the desert to be tempted by the devil. And the devil waited for the right time. He moved in the right place. He chose to use the circumstances to try to influence Jesus to do or to say something that was contrary to the Word of God. And yet Jesus, in every occasion, used the Word of God rather to highlight and to conform himself to what the Word said, not what he could have said, I say it to you, as he did to the disciples, as he did to other people that had listened to him, and that he had taught the scribes and the Pharisees. Rather to Satan, he said, the Lord said, and he actually had the scriptures specifically designed and written in such a way because he was the one who was the lawgiver. He was there from the beginning. He knew the scriptures better than Satan himself. And Satan had prepared the temptations that Jesus went through. And he was tempted. But he was only tempted, if you can receive this, in his flesh. Because his spirit never once would have conformed into falling for any temptation or trial that Satan would have brought. Because Jesus is, and at that time still was, the light of the world. Jesus, because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, was the light that came into the world, that shineth in the darkness. So whenever Satan tried to use some form of shadow or turning or some partial scripture, Jesus as light could show his truth by highlighting the fact that Satan was either misquoting or tempting him in ways that were contrary to the entire word of God. And that's what God wants to do with us. He wants us to highlight and be the light in every situation. Whenever there's a partial scripture being used or somebody's off the wall, you should know the facts of the truth of the light that you've been given because you are the light of the world. Jesus said, a city on a hill cannot be hidden and neither can you according to the knowledge and the wisdom that God has given you in your circumstances and situation today. God has placed you where you are to be a light. Just like he put that sun up there. He put the sun up there so that we could have the light and that we would enjoy the blessings of God, but also so that we could see that with which Satan himself, as an enemy of our faith, is out and about trying to do to those children of God that maybe don't understand the Word of God as they should. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. It became him for whom are all things, and by him are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, and against powers, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. The God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, 
after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. One of the things I've always enjoyed about Jesus is that any time I found myself in darkness, any time that I didn't know the way, any time that I didn't understand the scriptures, I had only to ask. Even in a situation today when I was wrestling with this social media thing that's going on, this social protest that people want to do in order to support one Christian against, you know, some ungodly worldliness, that I had to ask God, you know, well, but God, everybody's in on it. What's wrong with me? And I had to ask him for light into a given situation, for him to shine forth into my understanding, the dark reasonings of my mind, that I might know what the truth is, so that I would see the light, and I would be drawn to the light, and not to the shadows that often people, unfortunately in this day and age, are drawn to. They see something and they jump on it, because they've lived in darkness for so long, they think it's the light. But when you're in that kind of light, and it's going to be 100 degrees, you don't make any mistake about whether it's sunny, shady, dark, light, or shadows. I prefer that if I'm going to walk in the light, as he is in the light, and to have fellowship one with another, I prefer that people really have light in their life, and that they choose to know, as obvious as that sun is in the sky, the truth of what they're doing and not have this kind of like shadowy kind of like worldliness and protest and you know kind of conflicts that they keep getting involved in. I'd rather just be light because you could look at it two ways. One, light as it shines on it or light of lightness of being, meaning that you're not carrying the burdens of the world and you're not carrying the conflicts that the world's going to go through because Jesus said in the world, we're going to go through tribulation. And this is only the beginning, as some people are seeing challenges come upon their faith, and they think, oh no, we're no longer a Christian nation. Well, let me share with you the facts. We never were. A nation is a nation. Now, we have been a nation of Christians at times, but that doesn't mean that, based upon the way this nation was formed, that everyone would be a Christian. You see, until the kingdom come, and even when Jesus sets up his kingdom in and on the earth, then there still shall be those that, quite frankly, at the end of time, when they are given a chance to prove their faith to God or to their own understanding, they rebel with Satan and are cast out. So it's very, very, very interesting unless it's as obvious as the sunlight today shining the way for you to go. Let the Holy Spirit guide you with that word. Let the light of His word be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path so that where He wants you to go is so obvious it's like walking out into the sunshine on 102 degree weather because you know once you walk out into that heat you know you're in it. And you should know that when you're in the light.